More than one out of three. That is how many folks are flunking out of the government's mortgage bailout program. Some because their income was never verified. Isn't that what got us into this mess? And wasn't that the very thing they were trying to avoid to repeat this mess? Dave Ramsey has been warning that this fix will make things worse. He's proving eerily prescient. He joins me now, simulcasting from his hit radio show. You know, I mean, good intentions uh, run repetitive, but also expensive, don't they? That's exactly right. Repetitive and expensive. It's, a, it's an ongoing theme that the government appears, uh, the Obama administration, and sometimes the Republicans too, want to appear to be doing something good for hurting people. And they throw $50 billion at this little program to try to keep people in their homes. What's interesting is only 340,000 people have actually been approved for a, home for a loan modification. Now, all the $50 billion hasn't been distributed, but if it had been, that'd be 140. 47 million per person that's been approved. And yet the, the failure rate is startling. I mean, even when given help again, they're back in a pickle again. No, no, no. The, the truth is they weren't given help. See, that's the misnomer. Uh, and that's what the article that's running in the press today is, didn't pick up on. We deal with these folks every day. We work these things as, as a part of our counseling business. And the truth is, is that these banks are not doing these modifications. They're basically stonewalling the people. They're not returning their calls. They're, uh, they're flooded with requests. They well, don't, what do they, they don't, do, Dave? Competent. What do they do? What do they renegotiate? Anything? They don't renegotiate anything. And the, the 340,000, there's supposed to be 4 million people get help, according to the Obama administration. They got 340,000. Nobody got helped. Nobody got helped. It was a big deal where the government threw a bunch of money at the banks and nothing happened except a bunch of bureaucracy and a bunch of people got turned down. The people I'm talking to on our radio show are extremely angry and bitter about this because they get sucked into a deal where they're six, eight, ten months behind on their house, then nothing happens, and then they end up either losing the house or having to try to scrape and catch the mortgage back up. Now, in prior cases where there have been efforts to try to either extend the life of the loan, turn it into a 40 or 50 year mortgage, I don't know, or or freeze payments for a year. There have been other options. What's been the track record on any of this stuff? Well, most of the time it doesn't work because the, the bottom line is if somebody can't afford their payment, at the end of the day, when the, all the smoke clears on this, they're still not going to be able to afford their payment. We're just participating in their denial then. And, and so we've got to be real about this. And the other thing is this. The banks are not going to modify a $250,000 mortgage to where you only owe $150,000 unless the government gives them that other hundred grand. That's not how this program works. They're not going to just walk away from that money. And so instead what they're doing is they're just saying, okay, no payments for a little while, or, or the modification is a half a payment for two years, and that just goes on the back of the mortgage. And then the idea being that people can get back on their feet. But if they were never on their feet in the first place because they shouldn't mm -hmm. have been in these mortgages in the first place, we're just participating in their denial. It's delusional. And it's a really sad thing because it really hurts people who are hurting in, in the name of trying to help them. And so it's a misguided government bureaucracy meets Bank of America countrywide. God help us. Wow. You know, it's scary as you had seen this train coming down the pike. Meanwhile, uh, Dave, uh, we always get questions when people know you're going to be popping by. Here's this week's. Hey, Neil and Dave. My name's Natalie, and I'm a dentist in Southern California. I'm early on in my career, but I would like to be self-employed soon. And I'm wondering, what are some ways I can start planning for retirement as someone who's going to be self-employed and doesn't really have a 401k as an option? She seems very wow. young. She's already looking yeah, at me. Yeah, she's, a, she's go. a go getter. That's a dentist who's probably charging a lot. But uh, my, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, advisor. Well, you know, we, you can, as a self-employed person, you can set up an, a simple IRA, which is a 401k for small businesses. It's a very simple thing to set up, it, as the name implies, and it doesn't cost much. A, a traditional IRA with a larger company will cost you 1500 to $10,000 a year to administrate. But a simple is just a little simple, for, I mean, a traditional 401k. A, a, a simple IRA, this simple 401k program for small businesses works beautifully. You are required to match 3% for your employees that join, though, so know that going in. Well put. Dave, always good to see you again, my friend. You too, sir. Good to be with you. Dave Ramsey, the king of all things money, just 24 hours in New Jersey.